Well, that brings us to Arizona Senate candidate, currently Senate candidate, Carrie Lake. Now, she previously ran for governor back in 2022, where she emerged as one of the fiercest defenders of Trump's coup, as well as a general antagonist to those in the press who tried to correct her lies. We had a fraudulent election, a corrupt election, and we have an illegitimate president sitting in the White House. The fake news wants us to think that that guy got 81 million votes. Okay. All righty. I am going to not only be the governor of Arizona for four years, I'm going to do two terms. I'm going to be your worst freaking nightmare for eight years. And we will reform the media as well. We're going to make you guys into journalists again. So get ready. It's going to be a fun eight years. I can't wait. It is going to be fun. She lost. But I guess to her perverse credit, Carrie Lake really fully committed to the bit, going around to any fringe MAGA outlet that would take her and claiming, without any evidence at all, that the 2022, the midterm election that she lost, were stolen as well. We know that we won. We know that we showed up in droves and we know that they intentionally sabotaged Election Day. So we're going to fight to get the rightful duly elected governor myself into office. We won our election. I know that that my uh, opponent who is sitting in the uh, governor's office is a fraud and we are fighting that in the courts. And so I really understand what President Trump is up against because they did the same thing to him in 2020. We cannot have the election stand. The judge should declare me the rightful winner. I am the rightful winner. And we should move on and reclaim our government, our state government. It's been hijacked and stolen by a bunch of people who know this election was fraudulent. The people already know who the legitimate governor is, and you're looking at her, Steve. Now, she lost the election. She did win the best webcam in all of politics competition, years running. It is the best. Donald Trump backed an entire slate of election deniers in 2022, Carrie Lake among them, and they all lost. But the thing about Lake that really makes her stand out is she appears to be the only one who pulled a big lie of her own, right, and insisted she was the real winner, actually. She did this so often, in fact, that she got herself sued by an elections official in Arizona. Republican Stephen Richer, the Maricopa County recorder who oversaw Lake's loss, again, a Republican, took her to court over her repeated false claims that Richer rigged the election against her. He sued her for defamation in June last year, and Lake has been stalling on the case ever since until now. She just filed a motion for default judgment, which essentially means she is not contesting her liability. Because if we have seen time and time and time and time again when it comes to lies about election fraud, you can't defend the indefensible. I'm joined now by the man who is suing Carrie Lake, Stephen Richer. He's the Maricopa County Recorder, along with his lawyer, Jared Davidson, a staff attorney at Protect Democracy. Stephen, let me start with you and just tell me about what prompted you to take the somewhat extraordinary step of, of, of filing this lawsuit in the aftermath of that, of that 2022 election. Yeah, it wouldn't stop. And simply put, that's that's why we felt like we had to do this. We waited until she filed those claims with the court. She lost at the Superior Court. She lost at the Court of Appeals. She lost at the Arizona Supreme Court. Then she filed another lawsuit. Then I was hoping she would finally get a new job, but she kept talking about it, and she made it the centerpiece of all of her fundraising appeals and of her political prominence and even a book deal. And so I figured... She's not getting a new job. I am the job. And defaming my good name to her millions of followers, as she's so proud to proclaim, was her, her profession at that point. And so, really, this is the first time and hopefully the last time I've ever sued anyone in my individual capacity. But I talked to the team at Protect Democracy, and we thought we had a strong case. And, indeed, we do have a strong case. Jared, let me, let me ask you um, just legally the significance of today, uh, uh, the filing that she's not, basically not going to contest the defamation. She, she wants to fight on the grounds of, of damages. But that means, basically, you caught me. I can't go into court and say what I was saying was true about Mr. F uh, Richer. That's exactly right, Chris. This is an unequivocal admission by Ms. Lake that she has no evidence whatsoever to support her claims that Mr. Richer engaged in misconduct in the 2022 election. Of course, we all knew that she had no evidence all along, um, but Ms. Lake has repeatedly been stating that she is looking forward to showing receipts. And yesterday, she told her supporters that instead, 
she has no evidence. She's waving the white flag. And so now we are moving forward, not on liability, but rather uh, we are going to be moving ahead uh, to determine not whether Ms. Lake has to pay damages for the harm she's done to Stephen, but how much she's going to have to pay for the harm. I want to talk, Stephen, to you about about that aspect of it. I mean, you're again, I want to stress this. You're a Republican official in Maricopa County, right? Yes. And and you were right. ta- you were targeted by Ms. Lake in some of the sort of Baroque conspiracy theories that she was weaving. And, I, you know, from my perspective, if, this is someone who lied about the 2020 election. It seemed obvious she was lying about the 2022 election when she said she hadn't won. But but I also know that people on the wrong side of these sorts of lies can really have their lives upended, their careers. Like, what what is it meant to be the target of these lies? Well, it doesn't take much imagination to foresee the possibility that of your millions of followers, when you tell them that this man, Stephen Richer, has committed the most heinous crimes against our democracy, it doesn't take much imagination that one of your followers, two of your followers, might do something very extreme based yep. off of that. So in recent months, we've had two people arrested for threats to me. I get on a daily basis wow. messages about why I should be in Gitmo, why I should be in jail. And it, it, like I said, this needs to stop. That's why we filed this lawsuit. It is a bit rich, as Jared mentioned, that this is coming from somebody who said she had all the evidence and she was going to fight to the bitter end. Well, she just put up the white flag. She doesn't have any evidence. And while she's lying about me, she is lying to Arizonans, some Arizonans who have gone to jail, some Arizonans who have given her campaign money. It was all a lie that is now entered in court. Yeah, Lake's uh, team on Tuesday filed that default judgment motion that indicated she wouldn't challenge a culpability. They said that Richard should turn over relevant medical and psychiatric records to show his health was negatively affected. As he detailed in his lawsuit, Lake requested a jury for the default judgment hearing. Uh, so, Jared, there will be some adjudicative process here. But again, it will not be on the on the basic facts here, which she was so eager to contest. She has completely waved the white flag. This is all going to be on the damages portion of this. That's exactly right. Ms. Lake has conceded that she has no evidence whatsoever to defend herself. Again, we've known it all along, but she's been telling her supporters she's got the receipts. Um, We've known that she doesn't. And so now that she has surrendered, the case will move forward purely on the question of how much she's going to have to compensate Stephen for the immense harm that she's caused him. Stephen, just to zoom out for a second, you're, you're sort of right on this fault line of American politics, particularly in Maricopa County and particularly in yeah. Arizona. Um, and we've seen Republican members of the officials in your party uh, on both sides of it, right? And it doesn't really have to do about ideology. I don't know what your views are on, like, tax rates or abortion or a million different ideological questions. It's really just on the line of this basic fidelity to the truth and the facts. And how... How, what has that done to, to politics in your state? So, so tax rates should be as low as possible. I want to make sure we're clear on that. <laughs> okay. So that's how I feel about tax rates. I figured as but, much. Uh-huh. But two plus two, <laughs> two plus two equals four. And that's a truth that always has been a truth and will be a truth. Unfortunately, it has become something of a litmus test in some quarters. Now, not, it's not entirely dispositive, and I'm going to buck that trend in my election, but it unfortunately factored in significantly. And I will say to the ultimate detriment of Republican candidates, many of those candidates who won their primary based off of the big lie, that didn't carry over to the median Arizona voter. It's a losing strategy. It's lost in 23. It's lost in 22. It's lost in 21. It lost in 20. But more than that, it's immoral and people know better and leaders need to stop giving this any legitimacy. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it. 